Good evening. Uh, this is Thursday, March 23rd. It is 7.05, second floor of the town hall. Uh, this is the Brendan Conservation Commission. Uh, we have a quorum of four members present. I don't see any committee members online. Five minutes. Oh, I snuck in. I snuck in, sorry. Introduce ourselves. My name is Carl Hummel. I'm the chair. Next, Mike Amandalia. Um, Susan Cahalan, co chair. Often. Bob Sweet. Okay. Uh, we have our open meeting, open public hearing starting at 7 15, but we have some business we can get uh, ahead of time. You have some stuff for us to find. We can sneak it in now. No, I do. Yeah, and, and Susan has more. So this is for the the the, 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 the lawyer. Okay. So uh, yes, if it's lapsed and is no longer valid. Okay. Okay. So this is for thirty one Hartford Avenue. We approved their new order of conditions a couple of months ago. This is a release of the old one so that the lawyer can do the 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 correct paperwork with the registry. So is there a place here for signatures? It doesn't, it just didn't say that. Yeah. Maybe just one signature yours, I think the chair, right? Eh? Sure. Well, uh, I guess we'll take a page one of two. Okay. One, two. Yep, okay. Well, we'll I would leave. say I would say we sign it right here yep. just so that okay. it proves that it's a request for a certificate. So do you issue the certificate? Who issues the certificate? We would issue the certificate of completion, but this is a document saying what is it saying? It's requesting a certificate of completion, right? It's requesting a that the orders had lapsed. Lapsed, right. And well, I'm going to give this to Susan in charge of post meeting paperwork. Congratulations. Still don't know what to do with the stuff. <laughs> you have a better chance of finding out than me digging myself. I'm putting a drop box on my porch, by the way. <laughs> right. So I'll leave it with you guys. Yep. All right. Well, Maybe just you. write on this order has lapsed and has been replaced by another order. I don't know. Yeah. Well, what I would recommend is when they, after after we get the other signatures, we'll make a copy of it. You take the wedding's copy and can see if that's if your lawyer's comfortable with that or if your lawyer says we need to do more stuff. Well, it says it's a it's a request for a certificate of compliance, but I don't know where that. Well, the CO if the COC lapsed, then I don't know what we, what we would do on saying it's closed out. Well, well, by law. You would have to refile if it were, if it was brought to us before the uh, before it, the end date. We would extend it, but since it's lapsed and it's all done with, you'd have to refile to get. I believe. Well, we have a new one that we filed, but this was to get the old one off. To clear that old order of conditions. Then I think what the chairman said, we'll make a copy of that, give it to you, give you the original, and bring it to the lawyer. Bring it to the lawyer. Okay. And see what he says. That's why I said we should sign it anyway so that you yes. can say, yes, I brought it to them. Okay. That's, that's agenda item number 11. Is Chris Nudd here on, on the call? Okay. Bring that up later. I'm going to make a copy of that. All right. Um, this is the one for um the valve project. Okay. That got lost. So okay, well, just if you guys could resign this, I'll take care of it. Okay. It's the gas company or yeah, the gas Algonquin. Okay. 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 Make a copy for an hour. Yeah, wouldn't be a bad idea. Is that all you're here for? She, she was going to make you a copy now. Is that okay, Mr. Yes. 
Yeah, we have a little time. Do we know about the status of finding a clerk replacement? Uh, the selectman I got to know to go to the meeting that they discussed it last Wednesday, but I haven't heard any update. Oh, they're discussing it. That's good. But I, I, you know, definitely. Yeah. I read the email. I have to miss some right. days, and that was one of the days I missed. So I don't know if they actually discussed it or not. Carl, you are doing a wonderful job. I absolutely <laughs> top notch. Yep. Oh, seriously. Yes, well, uh, and I'm not getting paid thirty dollars an hour for it. <laughs> Something else we might be able to do quickly um, is Alyssa Bassoon or anyone else related to eighty four eighty six on Spritch Road on the call or okay. Um, and Peter, uh, Concom Finances. Have to do anything about getting the uh, desk opened up and finding checks and getting them? Yes, before I went south, I did that. So there were, I think, three checks. I made a copy and I left the copy on the desk. I took the checks over to the treasurer and they put them in and they began saying well where are these coming from and i'm saying well two are from a notice and the other one we got a check from the macc i don't know what that was but it was a check to us so it's been submitted whether that, an overpayment of an those. overpayment of something but uh that was 10 days ago so i have not checked the mail or checked the office last Last summer when we discovered, oh, here's a check from eight months ago. Right. They have a short life of about three months, ideally. One. To get our MACC payment so that we can get listed in, in, and get involved enrolled in their classes? No, I didn't know that was uh, what we need to do to get, well, we owe money to the MACC. They're yes, giving they're us money on one. We got to pay our dues. From last year, which is why I'm amused that they're giving us a check. I'm saying, well, Susan, they submitted, they, they're saying that Susan went and we need to pay up from your going. Oh, yeah, I registered for the conference, but I couldn't go because of work or whatnot. And so I told them I was canceling. So okay. They're trying to bill us anyway. I'm like, no. Okay, if you can, <laughs> if you can follow, if you can work with Peter on following up. <laughs> No, but the only other thing is, uh, well, I had to uh, send the notices of violation certified mail, and so I paid for that, and so then I received the form that I can get uh, reimbursed. So I don't know whether MACC is going to be reimbursed or uh, until we get a clerk, how we're going to tap any monies going out. I don't know. You know, I saw them run our ad on MACC website, so we must have really? paid our dues somehow. Because they wouldn't have, have <laughs> they wouldn't have run a red. Other taking pity on us. <laughs> don't know. But uh, I don't know. Usually they would send an invoice, don't they? Or is there an electronic? Hey, it's your. Well, annual... if they sent an invoice, they would have sent it to uh, the Concom mailing list before Susan and I got added to it in in mid January. So it would have got lost. Maybe. Yeah, I didn't see anything. Yeah. Okay, well, it's uh, my email. now 7.15. I will now run down uh, the list of people and see who is here for which open hearing. Do we have people here for 35 Taft Avenue? Yes. Okay, and are you, do you have a lawyer or someone else who bills by the hour? Okay, you may end up going last then. I might have my engineer. I can't, I can't read it. Um, Michael... Hazard, I'm not. I am here. Okay. Yeah, so he is, uh, All right. So you have you have one person. Uh, 106 Millville. Okay, and I recognize you. So. Uh, one, 116 Uxbridge. Uh, that's George's Surf and Turf. Okay, we'll we'll deal with that one. And 23K Pro. And yep, we have two. There are two different 
23 Cape Road things, so I will be sure to separate out the, the two of them. Um, all right, um, we'll deal with uh, the Georgia Surf and Turf one, 116 Oxbridge Road, DEP, uh, yet to be determined. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to continue the notice of intent until such time as they come back before us with an updated plan. So moved. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? Uh, do you have any idea what they what their plan is? Or? Well, we they they came and presented a plan, and we Peter and others were pushing back, saying you're saying you need to build the septic system in the buffer zone because you don't want to turn off the old one. Can't you do this in the off season if you're planning on doing the work sometime mm -hmm. in the next three years? And we haven't got a response back either to say whether they would adjust how they were doing or if they would. So it's, it's for, it's for, okay, I don't think I was here for that. Right. Meeting. So it was here to, to, uh, for a septic system. Yes. Upgrade. Yeah, well, correct. Place. Right. And, and yes. And I think we would allow it, but it's just, you know, well, could you, did you have to do it so much here? So it's, it's not a, yeah. a deal killer. I don't yeah, think they, they were, they were looking to reduce the amount of trees that they would need to cut down with the new system. And Peter brought up the point, can't you just do it during the winter when you don't need a septic system. So we'll, we will wait and see. Because he's open now, right? <laughs> yeah, well, no. the septic it's... system doesn't need replacing. They were looking ahead and, and to get it. something yeah. in the next three years and, and hold on to it. OK, so any further discussion? OK, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 OK, passes unanimously. All right, um, I saw a lot of hands for 23 Cape Road, and I imagine people in the audience are for it. There are two 23 Cape Road things we will be discussing tonight. Uh, the one that we will be doing now is the public, uh, the public hearing notice of intent submitted on applicant. Uh, <coughs> oh, needs to be let in. Damon, did that let you in? Damon Tinio, there. Oh, I saw it. Or he said calling or something. Yeah, accepted. I'm, He's there. Go go all the way down. Oh well, yeah, but it's in the section that says Oh, others invited. Others invited. Accepted. accepted. That means he accepted the meeting invite that I sent out over this weekend when I created the meeting. It doesn't mean that he's been able to join. The actual call. Text them back and say everybody else is able to, to call them using the link. Uh, it says accepted. Like he's having an issue. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we will, we will, that, that means I'll reorder things. Okay. As I was saying, what we're going to discuss at this point is the proposal by Blue Water in terms of the warehouse project. We will be discussing after the public hearings the uh, situation with the current owner, Abe, and in terms of uh, mitigation work that will be done because of uh, the silt events that are that are currently happening. So, uh, given that, uh, I will now open the public hearing for continuation for 23 Cape Road continuation of the notice of intent. Uh, sorry. Into the mic, uh, Connor Downey from Blue Water Property Group. Nice to meet you in person. Uh, Dan Wells from LEC Environmental and Kevin Demers from uh, Depreet Engineering as well. well. I'll say the background for this is that um, Susan prepared a, a letter that reviewed the literature in terms of diesel particulate uh, air pollution and impact on wetlands. You go back. Uh, your engineering firm, you, you sent us back a letter to it, and that would probably be the primary discussion. So, Susan, I will expect you to start doing following up. And, and you did you print that out? Pardon? Did you print that out by any chance? Uh, I printed out their message. It's, it's online. Let me see. I mean, I can pull it up. On I have a printed copy if you like from uh, the March 20th letter from Dupree Engineering that was responding to your comments. Is that what? Yeah. yeah. I could pull it up on here, but then. 
You want me to read it? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's. <clears throat> I'm not, my uh, throat is like. Because it won't have your the response to your comments, but it, it should. Let's see. We have reviewed the write up regarding diesel exhaust and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs, and have provided the following response regarding PAHs from a civil stormwater perspective. The original comments are provided in italics. Uh, so the question is I guess the proposed. Proposed drainage conveyance system will consist of structures outfitted with hoods, see drainage notes on sheet three, to enhance trapping debris and providing hydrocarbons protection. The deep sump and hooded catch basins will remove 25% of the total suspended solids from the stormwater runoff. The conveyance system will then discharge first to an underground storm tech isolate a row, which will remove 80% of the remaining TSS load and 45% of the phosphorus pollutant load. The stormwater will then be stored temporarily within the underground storm tech and crushed stone underground system and finally infiltrated through a sand layer to the native soil. This sand filtration will remove 80% of the remaining TSS load and 40% of the remaining phosphorus load. As tabulated within the stormwater report, the stormwater system will remove approximately 97% TSS, minimum of 80% removal required, and 67% phosphorus, minimum 60% removal required. The site is not categorized as land under high potential loads, as no refueling of trucks or trucking of chemicals is proposed from this site. The treatment train of other compounds such as hydrocarbons will first encounter the deep sump hooded catch basins. These structures will restrict movement of oils out of the structure during the storm by promoting the flotation of any trapped oil on the top surface, while the hood opening below the pipe invert will push water from below the potential sheen surface into the drainage network. Then following the stormwater runoff through the drainage system, the underground isolated rope will trap coarse sediments and debris, which based on the tendency for hydrocarbons to accumulate in the sediment, this will reduce concentration of hydrocarbons. Finally, to a lesser extent, the stone filtration laterally, but mainly the sand filtration vertically, almost all the TSS will be removed and therefore a majority of the bonded hydrocarbons will also be trapped. There is no accepted calculated standard or analysis through the state stormwater standards that can definitively conclude the impact of hydrocarbons within stormwater. The only known is that hydrocarbons have a tendency to bond to sediments. And as summarized above, we have calculated TSS removal far above the published standard 97% removal provided as 80% removal required. Compared to the DEP standards, this drainage system goes above and beyond for treating runoff water quality and also minimizes the potential for erosion as exists currently based on the uninterrupted overland flows. Along with the air quality assessment provided by Tech Environmental, we trust these will help address the concerns of the commission. Please feel to contact us. Kevin Demiers. Okay. Um, given the um, the you know the impaired waterway and whatnot, I think, and I think others would agree that we would feel a lot more comfortable to have a secondary backup. Um, have you looked into the urban filter inserts? Like at least near the loading dock. Yes, yeah, we've we've looked into them, but there's no. Like I mean, there's addition. no like measurement in addition. Yeah, but there's no measurement or requirement to. I mean, we're already going far above and beyond what's required of us. So I mean, it's kind of <clears throat> our stance on it. I mean, I guess my only question is, uh, pH. I I know hardly anything. Uh, what I had been taught is that when it comes to phosphorus, it bonds to the fines. And I imagine it's true with most things that they're going to bond with the fine particles and not the coarse particles. They have affinity, yeah. And that the TSS, the vast majority is the coarse, but the damage is done in the fines. So even if it's only 10% fines, that might be... 90% of the, I, I, I'm speculating here. So uh, that would be my concern as to 
because it's we haven't dealt with PAHs, and I'm not sure how they handle them and what's required. You're absolutely right. They do have an affinity more for fines than course. And both, that's both. that's my issue with the whole that the sediments, the sump, they catch the coarse sediments, but the fines that take the phosphorus, they're in and out and into the wetland, and uh, I don't know how to without actually infiltrating them. Right. So it's, I guess it's a question to you as an engineer. Either specifically on PAHs or that issue of fines. I don't know if you can. Yeah, the um, I mean, as far as as far as using the inserts, what I would say is that the you know current with the current setup, as far as a deep sump catch basin combined with the hoods, you know, we would be replacing those structures with the inserts, which may or may not have a have much of an impact on on the treatment. Um, the the fines, you know, the, the sand filter will be uh, a minimum of two to three feet below the below the uh, the underground stone system, but a on on the low side it'll be a maximum of you know approximately ten feet backfilled with sand. So there will be quite a you know quite a uh, a vertical column of filtration of the water before it reaches the uh, the native soil. Uh, so I would say there there would be quite quite a lot of distance for for these fines to be captured. Um, we also have the operations and maintenance manual, which indicates if if we find the infiltration is not occurring, we can go and and maintain that either you know replace the system, um, you know make modifications as needed. Um, so we're trying to do kind of a belt and suspenders approach that uh, that we have these these items and they but they also need to be maintained. Uh, as well. Is there a, a detail on the plans showing showing that? And did you add a detail of the hoods? And are the hoods cast iron or are they going to be plastic? They'll be cast iron. Cast iron. Yes. Yep. I'd like to see a detail of it. We uh The hoods will, the hood will work fine if they're installed correctly. Okay. In, in terms of timetable, there will be a continuance at the end of tonight's meeting because the planning board has not completed their sign off after the planning board sign off. And we will have their fixed plan to work with and then we'll be able to do our final review. So that's the, the expectation there. Uh, do you have other further follow up? It sounds like he, he had yeah, a question. Did, did you, you not vote to approve conditioned upon the planning board's approval? Um, I don't think so. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to that in a little bit because okay. I have some questions about what the planning board may or may not be approving. So I wonder, okay. I'll check in with you later on that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, a quick question. So you, you said it an either or. Why couldn't it be both? The, um, you know, your stormwater defender and then just the inserts like down by the loading docks. Well, this this would be uh, at the individual catch basin level. So, so as opposed to uh, the insert would basically take up the inside of that structure. So obviously, without a, um, you know, you wouldn't be able to put yeah, a hood in addition to that because it would so. be obstructing. So it'd pretty much be an either or if if we if we came back. Does the system as currently designed uh, capture the fines to address? It it does capture ninety seven percent TSS. It, it does capture the uh, well over the required sediments. Right, but it 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 wouldn't be able to probably answer fines versus solids. I but I that's uh, we have a was there a sound barrier? Wasn't there that issue or that's not coming for us because where the wall was going to be located wasn't that a big issue? Well, or did that get settled? The issue, the the only impact. Or the only point of discussion that this meeting, this commission has in terms of the sound wall is, is there a portion of the sound wall that's going to be within the 200 foot buffer? So uh, that would again be contingent on whatever the planning board comes up with. Gotcha. Yes. Okay, because, and then the other thing that was kind of tied to our next meeting, but they were making the argument that the buffer was of no value because it would kind of got biffed and my response to that was, well, that buffer might be restored or should be restored or which buffer, the one, uh, the north one, the south one or the one by the creek? whatever buffer that got <laughs> biffed, uh, who biffed it and when is that going to get improved? 
uh, parts of the buffer we know are getting worked on. So I didn't know if that was this part or how far that buffer disturbance went. But uh, the way it applied to this one, I forget what it was. You were making some comment that you didn't have to. Oh, it was it was the uh, alternative. It was shifting that you're saying you didn't want to shift it this way because you thought it would. I forget if, if we stayed out of the riverfront, we wouldn't be making that improvement to the, you know, the underground pipe that goes directly into the wetland. If we kept that, you know, by avoiding riverfront disturbance, we'd have to keep that pipe as it is. So the the design is improving, you know, daylighting it, having above ground riprap channel to s further slow it down. And that's that's the the stormwater that's coming out of the system. So it's already there's already not that much coming out. So that was our argument that it's better to work in the riverfront, that disturbed section of riverfront because we're clearly improving the conditions. And then there's there's another smaller part of riverfront just north of there, and that that's already existing disturbed too. So <clears throat> technically that could be avoided, but um, I, maybe Kevin, what was part of the reasoning for that, that northerly part of the riverfront? Uh, the northerly was, uh, was a slope being proposed in that location. Uh, so what we uh, I have a plan I can share here. Overlay plan, yes. So. So as opposed to the current state of the land, we were proposing come back and provide a, a vegetated slope, a vegetated gentle slope as opposed to um, a retaining wall, which would be what is needed to to completely stay out of the uh, that buffer area. Okay, and then just because uh, I get confused with this site, that there was a detention pond maybe at some point, and you're telling me that there are catch basins that are working in White, in White Road, and that it comes currently into the outfall that is on the extreme left. And are you saying that that is a functioning system right now? Uh, I would say it's not functioning due to the uh, due to the undersizing of the piping there. Um, currently, the the drainage system gets overloaded and goes overland towards that. So even if it were undersized, it would still be gushing out. My, I, so I'm just saying it's a mystery to me, <laughs> and it, whether it's your guys or it's previous, this is where it comes together. But I don't know why that we we or our con com would have approved that uh, drainage all the way out there into the wetland is it or it's, it's damn close to the wetland uh and or this is our opportunity to do it right so right now the pipe goes right under your building right uh what what we're planning on doing under proposed conditions and shown uh you can see the purple line on the far right that goes down toward going to the redirect it south. Around. We're redirecting the existing drainage. Right. Uh, and so you're going to biff, down or you're going to biff that whole pipe. So why mm -hmm. not biff the whole system and and do the end correct? Back it up a little bit. I, you know, do it right. <laughs> we have a chance to do it again. Or piping in there. So that's that's what we're proposing. There's just the area here is, I believe, it's rip wrap to slow down the water after discharge before it goes into the. Correct. It's it's a it's a riprap channel. We're not proposing to, we're we're proposing to discharge have Long. a uh, a flared end discharge, uh, outside of the uh of the buffer of the existing encroachment to the buffer, and pro providing riprap to uh, slow down the flow before it reaches the existing outfall at that headwall uh, existing headwall. Right. I guess I'm just saying, what is so sacred about that head head wall? Why do we have to even use that head wall? Couldn't we shorten it up? And uh, if this was a virgin site and that that head wall wasn't there, what would we be doing? Uh, we we would be discharging. I, I mean, the pipe would be located more or less the same location. Um, 
we just would have more or less of the of the riprap channel. We're basically extending the riprap channel just to, um, you know, just to uh, keep intact that existing area going into the wetland and preventing erosion to occur going forward at that close distance to the existing wetland. all going to get biffed so i just want whatever's going to be best at the end so i don't want to have to just biffing this means being destroyed removed oh. <laughs> yeah i mean you know and that that tributary is is part of an impaired level five river that's really messed up so we don't want to add to it basically so okay so to to summarize points you've been addressing are there specific changes that you're asking them to make to the plan that we've received previously to reflect the conversations you've been having? Uh, we want to have a notation saying something is cast iron. Well, I want to see the, the detail. I'm trying to find it. I'm trying to find it right now, actually. Yeah, um, the detail of that <clears throat> filter that he was talking about. The, the downstream thing. defender. Yes, that's, that's detailed. Do you know when that was sent? I'm trying to find it. Uh, the, the only other point I'd make is that there's a couple things, major things that require maintenance. Well, and yeah, they're kind of new. It's going to get to the maintenance plan after you finish discussing the concerns specifically about the, the site that went back and forth in the last week. Uh, I. I guess I, I throw it out to the engineer is could we shorten that up or what's to be gained by the additional does it give more treatment uh, going through that? I I don't know because I'm not proposing it. It's right now there's something extending into the buffers of the 200 foot buffer zone. Do we want to leave the stuff that's there or do we want to ask them to demolish what's there, which would have a lesser impact. And, and, and so take a proposal say what people were interested in having done, what the commission is interested in doing. Uh, I have a question, Carl. So if they leave the pipe that's there, they are not going to dig anything and rip it out, and dig it out and cause more impact to the wetland correct it is going to work to that swale right correct it's a it's all going to be a surface uh a surface energy dissipation as far as the riprap at the surface we're going to leave uh not need to rip anything out right so why would you go in and dig something out of the wetland and cause more impact to the wetland when you could just leave it the way it is work around it attach to it and be done with it. We're all about saving, working on the wet. We're all, we're all about keeping the wet, less impact to the wetland. But now you want to go and dig it all out just to move it back. How many feet? Oh. So, so, Peter, do you still feel there's value in, in taking out what the, something I, I guess I wasn't just real up to what is being proposed. So you're not putting a pipe into a pipe. You're saying you're putting it to a surface flow that is then going down and then meeting an existing pipe correct in a head wall yes and so you're not so that pipe even though it might be undersized whatever is not going to impact the treatment correct that was that was the reasoning for not tying directly into the end of that drainage system which that was really the one way i could see staying out of the buffer would be doing that however the pipe is undersized so any larger storms, you know, if you have a cover there, it's it's going to just gush out of the cover uh, and run into that into that wetland. So we figure by providing this this riprap, we can dissipate energy of all flows, reduce velocity, and uh, and help that uh, help that existing outfall, which which appears to have substantial erosion. Uh, Mr. Chair, could I clarify too to Mr. Tinio's point? Uh, the, there would be no work in the actual wetland. So the head wall of that existing system is right up against the wetland starts just down grading of that. So you would maybe alter, you know, an inch beyond that, but just the work of removing that head wall and pipe. So there wouldn't be any wetland disturbance. 
So yeah, no, I get it. I just said I'm. I'm just trying to. I, I'm not against what you guys are trying to do. I just want to make sure that we're not doing things just because we feel like making you do more stuff. That's all. So, so I'll I'll pull the committee. Is there? Are there people on the committee who are interested in asking them to go in and the existing infrastructure, even though they're not planning on using it? I guess it's not worth it, okay. uh, you know, even so, though it's going to sit there and look ugly and uh, okay. eventually, I don't know. Okay, but, so, yeah. so we, will, we will leave that issue as settled. Leave the existing pipe. Um, I have a question. Yeah. That's it. So, okay. yeah. so I get that you're slowing down the water. Is there any, the neighbors are concerned that on rainstorms, the amount of water that goes into that river floods that river, overpowers the river, and then causes them problem on their properties. How do you plan on mitigating that? Uh, the, Slowing it down, but you're not decreasing any water. If anything, you're going to add to it. Are there going to be bigger retention ponds? or? Uh, we, we showed a, um, uh, a decrease in flow for the, for the one through 100-year storm events um, in the stormwater report. Uh, we show decrease there. We'll be capturing and controlling the water as opposed to existing conditions, which is just a you know a sheet flow across the site that enters the river. We'll have controlled points, and the water will go through this system with the underground chambers. And the the process of this will retain more water and allow the infiltration before it overflows during the larger storms and goes to the uh, to the proposed outfall. So there will be some some level of uh, detaining the water, uh, you know, past the past the initial peak of the storm, uh, unlike the existing conditions. Uh, so that's that's in short how we'll uh, how we'll decrease the impacts of runoff to the river. And I'm sure it's going to be a lot cleaner than what it is now. That's true. Yes. All right. Uh, any other issues about the report that they submitted in? I'll move on to uh, the next question, which ties in with the planning board. Uh, what the maintenance plan would be that is uh, approved by the planning board? There are two issues in the maintenance plan that the CONCOM expressed interest in. The first is, what would the timetable be over the next X years on a yearly basis, 20 years, 50 years? for cleaning out these filters or replacing them, the ones that we have been talking about. And the second one is we discussed having a inspection taking place after a sufficiently severe storm event to make sure that there was no sheet runoff and that the uh, stormwater management plan is functioning correctly. Uh, so that's another reason why I, I don't, there are too many things that we want to conditionalize on the planning for its final approval. So I'm not comfortable having those as well as uh, looking at whatever their second wall, a final plan is and where it's getting positioned. And Mr. Chair, if I could add a third, it would be the cleaning of the catch basins with the hooded pump, because we're not going, it's not going to be town owned infrastructure. Right? It's going to be privately maintained. Yeah, I, I would call that the clean out timetable. Okay. So I guess uh, per the per the operation maintenance um, maintenance report we submitted, uh, I believe it was in the February seventh letter. Um, we call out. We have the tables calling out uh, all the components of the drainage system. So the catch basins, the uh, underground system uh, filter, and we call out for quarterly quarterly inspections in that checklist. Or a storm event greater than uh, greater than two and a half inches, uh, we would go and inspect it. And at that time, there's a whole checklist of items: uh, check the inlet, outlet pipes, uh, check for scour, and uh, and also standing water. in In terms of the underground system, there are uh, there are ports uh, ports that come to the surface that you can uh, you can monitor the water level over a period of time, and if it's if there's standing water for more than 48 hours, 
then that's an indicator that something, you know, something has gone wrong with the system, is stopped infiltrating at that time. Uh, so at that time, uh, there will be a plan to uh, to amend that or, uh, you know, repair or replace the system. We can can I add as well, we're happy to obviously include some kind of a maintenance obligation in the order of conditions that that tie us to that, you know, a timeline that's acceptable to right. the commission to us. Um, if, happy if, to include. if you could get a maintenance plan with the planning board that includes these actions, then they don't have to have a separate obligation that the conservation commission monitors. It would be monitored by the planning board. That is fine. Mr. Chair, kind of along those lines, because you can come up with a great plan, right? It's whether it's going to get lived in and when the next person buys it mm -hmm. and it goes, who's going to do it? And I'm not saying that I want the town to be responsible, but I'm not quite sure how to have oversight or to make sure that it's getting done or to make sure there's a check. I don't know the process to. I, I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, if I believe that one, in one of our other meetings, we asked to be included in their maintenance schedule, yes. have it, have the town get a copy of it as well. Right, sure. And my, my, my hope is that the planning board would take ownership of the of the plan and then we would have a section of that specific to our concerns but the, the maintenance would be for the entire site and the entire project yep and that would be something that the 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 property owner would be in charge of and then they would delegate parts of that to whoever was leasing the property sure it would be to uh i'll just speak from past experience similar systems i'll call it all building systems there's typically a third party inspector that come review the system make sure it's functioning properly write up a report so what we can do is you know provide that report to each of the boards planning board conservation commission as necessary along with a notification of when the uh inspection will occur in case anyone wants to uh attempt i mean i would think that Anybody that is running this facility would not want to have issues and would maintain it so that there's not water bubbling out of the catch basins. Um, so, yeah, I think a quarterly or however you, however the planning board or the conservation feels, uh, we could, yeah, you know, as long as something's emailed to us, it lets us know that it's being done. That's all that really matters. And I, I think. Okay, any other questions from the commission? Not at this time. Okay, in that case, I will ask if people in the audience are interested in coming up and, and asking questions and using the mic. Any online interested? Right. Uh, May I just clarify one thing on the plan, just so we're, and we can hopefully finalize everything, you know, prior to the, the last meeting. As far as the riprap in the riverfront area is concerned, would you like us to do that to slow down the water further or take that out of the plan? That's the only disturbance within the riverfront. So we're trying to help, but. I think, I think if it's, I think if it's, if it's slowing down the water, I think it's smart to keep it. That's my opinion. Um, Based on the sidewalk that three of us did last Friday, the existing site, the this the, the area that was tiger seeded and all of the part on the, the riverfront area, that is working perfectly. The stormwater management in this area is no longer a problem. So if if, if so in that sense, if you decide that because you're putting on impervious service in a roof, you need more riprap, that would be up for you. The problem that we'll be discussing later on, all of the excessive stormwater runoff is now coming in this part of the property rather than the southern border. What's the slope from the rip wrap? Is it is there any slope or it's got it's totally flat? Uh more more or less flat. Just a question of what's gonna 
a maintenance looking forward. Think of it 20 years. Riprap, I guess stuff will grow up in there, right? And sediments are going there. I I don't know if there's benefits one way or the other, right? Mike, you have any opinion as to? Well, uh, depending on the size of the riprap, it slows the velocity of the water down. Well, we're not talking about by velocity. This should be pretty slow velocity, right? It's flat, but yes. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, it's couldn't hurt, right? Couldn't hurt. Okay. The the other thing I wanted to close the loop on is what specifically are you interested in having them show us at the next meeting at a plant? Uh, I want to see a detail of the uh, cast iron hood, how it's going to be attached. And that filter that system you talked about having 10 feet of sand, I tried to find a detail on the print. I couldn't find it. Filter system. Okay, well, we, 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 can, we can review that at the next meeting then, rather than holding up all of the other public hearings and people who are waiting. Yeah, right. So, catch basin detail, uh, as well as the filters, correct? Right. Um, Specifically on, on the uh, hood. Yep. And then maintenance plan that'll be determined and governed by the planning board with CONCOM to receive inspection reports and notifications. And, and, and see what the planning board has as a maintenance plan. Sure. And if we think it's inadequate, we'll let you know. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> totally understand. Um, and then final location of the sound wall, correct? Yeah. Those are the, those are the follow-ups. Contingent on how we work with the current owner, Abe, in terms of dealing with the existing runoff, that may slightly modify what you're doing in the southern section of, uh, of the plot. Understood. All right. Uh, any so, if there's no further questions, I'll entertain a motion. May I, may I, I, ask a I got one question. Oh, okay, Damon first, and then uh, Karen Fried. Um, so we're we're looking for three pretty much housekeeping items. Like, do you, Mike? Do you want to see that uh, that hood system because you might want to change it, or you just want to just see what it looks like? Make sure it's in the plan. I want right. to make sure it's in the plan. I want to see what it looks like. Yeah. I want to make sure that it's uh, adequate. That, that hood will work if installed properly. So right. I want to make sure that the detail shows the proper installation. Correct. Okay. I just didn't know if there was something here that with all these few little things if we wanted to um, you know get make a vote vote on it and then contingent to the to the paperwork that you to get you the schedule and everything it's going to just be an email or a plan or do you want to bring it in another meeting? Um if you do want, if you don't have people here physically at the next meeting, if you make an email, I will print out copies or make it available at the next meeting for people to see online. So, Damon, does that answer your question? I'm just letting to know if we wanted to vote on this and con contingent to all the paperwork getting in hand to. No, I, as I said earlier, there's too much. That is still up in the air that the planning until the planning board has their final plan. I don't want to make it conditions on all of the various questions that we have based on the planning board's final approval. Okay. Now the planning board has gotten everything back from Jeff Walsh. So I mean the only thing I think we're we're waiting for in planning board. We got the green light from the engineer. We're waiting on um I think us the issue with the with the road. Connor, correct me if I'm wrong. The the turning lane and the what traffic study, maybe? Yeah, traffic and acoustics. I mean, so it really has nothing to do with your condition, but that, whatever you guys want to do. If, if the planning board at their next meeting says that they are signing off on the parts of the plan that the CONCOM is concerned about, then we can definitely do something conditional next time. So, uh, um, uh, Karen, we had Would you like something to be presented at the planning board meeting from conservation that you that you would require them to put in for as a condition? Because that's something that we need to look at. You know, what do you? 
I'll talk with you about that offline about whether whether we can go to the planning board meeting or not. Okay. See about scheduling a joint meeting then. Uh, uh, Karen Friedman, did you have a question? I do. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you said, my name is Karen Friedman. I represent uh, Christine Buchold and um, AJ Charbonneau the, of Butters at uh, 14 Talbot Drive, uh, Talbot Farm Drive. I, I have two questions. One is for um, the Blue Water representatives and one is for the commission. Um, for the Blue Water representatives at the planning board meeting, I believe it was the last planning board meeting, I thought that the um, the gentleman from Dupree Engineering indicated that there would be additional cutting down of trees about 20 feet into the existing tree line. Is is that correct? Uh, to clarify that, uh, I believe I spoke about this at the um, at the CONCOM hearing. Uh, I was present at the CONCOM uh, two hearings ago, which I believe was in January. And at that time, I, I clarified that our initial plans showed a showed a tree line being cut back. However, based on the site walk, it was apparent those were uh, those were large canopy trees, and we were just doing some grading activities uh, in you know where the tree line was shown. So that's all canopy that won't be disturbed. Uh, so there's no uh, there's no disturbance of tree line that that we need to propose. Uh, on the edges of the, of the uh, limited disturbance. Thank you. Um, and then Western and Southern. So there, there's no cutting of actual trees. It was just the branches that were hanging over. I see. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and then for the Conservation Commission, um, th this seems like a particularly um, complicated project with respect to the wetlands, and it seems like there are multiple potential impacts on an already degraded wetland. Um, and one of my, well, the only question I'll ask now is, is the, will the Conservation Commission be considering ordering a peer review of the, the impact of the entire development on the wetland in terms of the impervious surfaces that will be added, the nine acres, the, you know, the um, the runoff, the diesel fuel, um, and just whether that will actually benefit the wetland or whether it will further degrade it. Susan, you were talking about peer review in the past. Would we um, do that through? Isn't that what stormwater management is? Well, the Graves report, which I think evaluated the stormwater management plan, made it clear that it was not evaluating it in terms of its the impact on that it it didn't review it with respect to the um, mass wetlands law or the and, and I'm presuming the um, or assuming that it also wasn't reviewing it with respect to the Minden wetlands bylaws. Um, I mean, the, the Conservation Commission, I, I, I think, has the authority to um, order a peer review under uh, Chapter 44, Section 53G, and, and the Section 10B of the bylaw. Uh, you okay. Um, just the fact that the elaborate system that they are putting underground that is cleaning this water um, I'm not saying that it's perfect, but I think that that storm, the guide, stormwater management guidelines is pretty strict. Um, and what they're using to clean all this and to catch, capture anything if it is an issue. Um, I, mean, I guess the peer review, yet, yeah, but I, I, I think we should talk to the town engineer and maybe get some input from him if it's even worth doing it, or if he has some input on it. Later, later in the meeting, we will be discussing the distressed nature of the existing wetlands and some remediation we may be doing it on it. That is something that when we establish what the proposed remediation would be, 
before Blue Water comes in and does their work, then we would be able to have Blue Water look at what the proposal is, and then if they need to modify their plan in, the, in that part of the parcel, at that time, if we're not comfortable with the work that they are proposing, then we would talk more more fully about peer review. Uh, this statement says we can check with the town engineer and think about who else we would be engaging to do a uh, storm, a specific review of the stormwater, a peer review of the stormwater issues. Thank you. The, the concern is the cumulative effect of this development on the, the existing wetlands and the surrounding area. It seems like there, there are issues with the soccer field, the solar fields. You know, we've got the the, um, the recent uh, siltation episode. So wait another 45 minutes and we will be bringing up the, the soccer field I, as part of our site walk. I will. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other discussion before we uh, continue this particular uh, applicant? All right. I'll yeah, thank you. Yeah, we'll just wait for the other information to come in. And OK, I'll entertain a motion to uh, continue 23 Cape Road to our next meeting. Can someone tell me the date of our next meeting? Uh, look at my phone. April something. April 1st is a Saturday. Yeah. So it's. Are we the second Thursday? Second Thursday. First, 8th, 15th, 14th, 13th, I am going to say. Okay, the 13th. Continue until our April 13th. So moved. 13th. Is there a second? A second. Discussion. Favor. Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, let's see. I think the next one will be April 6th. April 6th is the first, would be the first Thursday. Oh, I'm sorry, 13th, sorry. So it'd have to be seven days after that. All right. Um, I think now we would move to 106 Millville, continuation of discussion and enforcement order for a big mound of dirt, 106 Millville. Schultz said. Good evening. So we have some pictures that we'll um, we'll sh <clears throat> share with you all. And it gives a little bit of progress. I gave some copies to to the people that are here. Yep, and I showed them the color pictures already. Um, what I can also do is show you actually better pictures on the iPad. Um, those are from drones. Yes. Yeah. We actually, it, the technology is crazy. The Russians shoot a lot of the sky. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stay. We'll stay around. Men that should be safe. <laughs> he sort of go like this. If you're able to send these via email, I can put them up. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yep, I'll, I'll send them to you. So, um, and I'll certainly um, Tom um, take over and talk about the technical stuff. Just a couple things. So, we did run into a couple of problems um, trying to put dirt between the buildings. Um, I'm not sure if you see it on one of those pictures, but let me see here. Uh, this one here. we ran into a uh, pipe um, and I, we don't think we damaged it, but obviously we would have, and, and certainly we'll, we'll investigate at some point to make sure we didn't. But if we tried to continue to move in there with the front end loader, we would have destroyed that pipe uh, that appears to come from somewhere between the buildings. Um, so we kind of pipe, what size pipe? So you're, you're just talking the impression. That yeah, the impression. There's a drainage pipe under there. So, so the others can see. There's a drainage pipe here. When, when they start driving over with the excavator, 
it started to collapse. Okay. So there's apparently, well, they believe there's a pipe in there. Um, so we piled the dirt out in front there. Um, what we originally were going to do was, again, talk tonight about stockpiling in that second pile behind the house. I think what we've decided to do instead of that, um, we asked Tom to take a close look to make sure that it'd be out of the buffer zone. We actually want to, and I think you have a picture, probably have a picture look something like this. With a big pile growing there? Is that... Um, so if you look at this, so that's the, that's where it's located right now, yeah, but it's so going to be moved. I'll pass this around. This is the area I want you to see Let's basically see. right under these pine trees. This is the old house next door. And under that area where the pine trees are, there's a little bit of rock ledge. We, what we'd like to do is move the, um, uh, material and start laying it out there to fill that area in and then plant grass on it. Um, so that that frankly looks a little better and it widens that area around that house so that we can stay away from any erosion issues. We're not in the buffer zone is my understanding and, right. and Tom verified it today. Uh, oh, perfect. Um, so we get those things to share so that people can see this. Okay. So we are talking this. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we're talking this stone area right here. That is correct, yeah. So we want to fill us a little bit above it, around this stone area here, down, I think, maybe to the end of the house, maybe a few feet that way, and then kind of curve it over this way. Um, I want to make sure I don't lose me. Uh, uh, curve it over, I believe, towards this corner. Yes. So we want to Fill this area and, and curve over like this. Are you going to stay above the stone wall? Is that what you're saying? No, we're going to. It's not a stone wall. It's like stone ledge. Um, it, there's another picture there I can show you. Um, we want to fill in around that stone ledge here and expand that backyard a little bit. Looks to me like it is kind of a stone wall. So, yeah, I mean, maybe over towards that way. But if you yeah. look over here, it's really just rocks. Okay. And that tree can survive? Uh, yes, that tree is actually not too close to the stone wall. And also, you'll see all the rubbish and stuff off to the side here. That's all going to be now. None of that will be buried. Um, so that's where we want to put that fill that we're pulling out of there. Expand around the house, improve that area, and uh, stop any erosion from the house, and then uh, plant grass on it. And I believe in one of those pictures you have, you probably already see some large piles of loom. So what's that going to look like? Uh, up and then down, or you're going to just fix it? They're going to they're going to smooth it. You know, nice looking. Wait, which part are you referring well, to? Well, uh, it sounds like it's a permanent location behind the old house. Yes. And so I'm asking, what is that going to end up looking like? You're going to be putting three feet up. No, there? I, I, well, feet? I, I'm guessing a couple feet. And then where the stone cliff there ends, fill that in deeper and slope it down and make it look natural and nice. It'll be a, it'll basically be a back lawn, backyard lawn. Right. But anytime you put two feet, you got to worry about the water coming down slope. So I, you know, it's well, obviously that's, that's, that's what we got Tom for Tom, take it away. We can already see it. The topography in the backyard is sloping downwards towards the wetland. And the closest wetland flag that's even in the remote vicinity of where that stockpile or where the dirt would be put in would be the wetland flags that you see just on the far hand, left hand side. So that would be wetland flag B14. And then it slopes back down towards the pond that's located to the southeast that you can't see on the, on the plan right now. But it's already got the sloping topography that we would just be matching, right? essentially matching, yeah, but bringing that slope up towards the, the rock wall and then planting it with grass. So the grass would also stop the flow of water and then slow it down so you wouldn't have the crazy velocities that you'd see on a very steep hill of just dirt. A quick question. So you just said this is out of the buffer zone, correct? Correct, yes. You're, we're out of the 100-foot buffer zone. Correct? Yes. Okay, so just making that aware. Making yeah, no, we're, we're well aware that it's not 
within the jurisdiction of okay. of you gentlemen but yeah. but we're you know we're trying to we're trying to make sure that we explain it to you and explain so that the neighbors understand what we're doing but we're certainly not doing anything that that involves the conservation commission um as far as as far as that area goes but we still wanted to make sure that we were transparent and communicating so so let me let me say previously the plan was that we would be putting the dirt in stockpile location north and stockpile location south and we would be covering both of those with a very complicated way of mm -hmm, right the runoff to happen your new proposal is instead you're not going to use either of those, but you're going to be filling in uh, a, a different area. Yeah. What will you be putting on top of the dirt to keep it from loom away? loom and uh, hydro seeding? Exactly. Yeah. The same thing that's going to be on the on the big slope that's already out there that we're proposing. So just a cap of loam, and then we're going to hydro seed it with either lawn seed or a conservation seed mix. So how many days is it going to take you to move the dirt from the Existing hill to this new so, a lot of the dirt has already been trucked off, so there's not even too much dirt back there right now. And all of the grading has already take pla or taken place, so it only take a, a day or two, I think. Those guys are moving yeah. pretty fast out there. They're, they're spending $12,000 a week for the rental of the equipment. That's why the owner said, geez, could we <laughs> kind of cut out the middleman, that that pile, and move it? Because roughly it's twelve grand a week for the equipment. The other change is that previously you needed to come in within 90 days of saying where the dirt would be held from the two stockpiles to its eventual destination. You now made a change to say the dirt's going to stay on site permanently and it's going to be outside the buffer area. Is that correct? Right? Yeah. Uh, any questions from the commission about that? And, and so, the only issue, as you said, since it's outside the buffer earth, we would be concerned that the hydro seeding of the load took place and it didn't get washed away by a storm event for the yeah. next couple of weeks. Well, remember, we still have the retaining walls up anyway. Yeah, we have all the siltation fence already up and it essentially um, is where the, the property boundary is shown there. So it, kind of, it, it loops up towards the house and then makes a straight angle towards the barn and then down. So we have all the erosion control barriers and siltation fences already up there. Okay, so in, in the buffer zone, the work that you were doing to, to remove the excess dirt per se, I guess, so that's all pretty much, would you say 75% done? Oh yeah, it's more than that. It's all the way done. All the grading is done. It just needs to be capped with a loam right now. And the only reason that wasn't taken care of today was because it was started to rain a little bit, and they didn't want to have the machine on top of the dirt pile any further to prevent any more erosion. All right, thank yeah, you. we're we've got it to grade, and frankly, I drove up there just before I came this meeting before it got dark, and it it looks really good. I'll take a ride by tomorrow. That's good. Thank you. Up and use the mic. My name is uh, Kathleen Alexander, 14, 14 Level Street in Menden. Yep, and I just have a question for Scott. This was the um, proposed uh, plan for the um, the hill. I was just checking to see if this is actually what it was because it appears to be um, a lot more as far as the grade is concerned the i'm tom shuts by the way oh, scott are consulting yeah. um but the, they the grading was staked out so it is accurate to what the plan is showing okay that, that was just something that i created on microsoft word okay but it's accurate to the actual engineered plan that you have in hand i think i gave you an 11 by 17 of that okay it, it matches the contours on there okay thank you the other question i had was um on this plan here um, there has been a lot of progress made, and I appreciate that. I was just concerned about what is going, I know you're going to hydro seed this area with the indigenous plants. What are you planning on doing to the plateau, the flat part of the 
uh, hill, shall we say. I think they're going to keep that as somewhat of a, a vehicle parking area, and that is outside of the buffer zone too. But the grass and all of the loam, that's going to take care of any of the erosion that or the, the water that might run off that parking area there. Is, the, then, is the loam going on the parking area? It, I think it's going to stay either gravel or dirt up oh. there. The loam is going to be put onto the actual hill itself to allow for the seed to germinate and take it properly. Okay. So then you have the actual erosion control measures that the seeding would help with. Okay, because our neighbors were concerned that the um, the dirt was flying into their pool and if it, can, so, if it remains the way it is on that plateau. So the only reason it's up there right now is again because there was the pipe between the two buildings that wasn't able to be driven over by the machines and they weren't able to spread it today due to the rain. Okay. So that's the only reason that the dirt is up there right now. Okay. And then the rest of it, again, as we talked about throughout the rest of the hearing, is going to be moved over to the south side of the property. Okay. And All that... those big piles are going to pretty much get moved. Sure. Probably start from up. It sounds like her concern is that that area that's going to be driveway. It's going to be If it's going to be gravel, then make it gravel. Just don't leave it in dirt and let the wind whip it, right? So, yeah. Uh, exactly. That's our yeah. concern. Yeah, we'll I'll, I'll we'll make sure they know. I mean, uh, you know, whatever it is they want for a driveway, because you get that like riding stable right there. Yes, right. Thank you. Would um, asphalt on there be an option? Well, you know, I'll I'll leave it to them. I mean, they're not required to put anything specific there, and they and and I'll be honest with you, they've spent thousands and thousands. That'd be close to a hundred thousand dollars already. So. I'm not prepared to commit them to anything other than, yeah, no, I, it actually, it's a great idea, um, but I think for sure we're not going to have the clay sit, sitting up there. There'll be something there, whether it be gravel, crushed stone, or crushed uh, asphalt, or asphalt someday. Um, his plan is to improve the, the property, and make it look nice. Outside the buffer area is a, the only concern is that silt blowing off of yeah. it into the neighbor's lawn and into the wetlands or if there's a lot of runoff going down and that would be going into the buffer area yeah. i expect we'll make sure that doesn't happen yeah you'll, you'll, uh, i think if you look you'll see they've got uh, tom had him design some really good uh, drainage areas there and those are already in place there's a bit of a hill there with loom um i think it's going to look I think I think everyone's going to be pretty happy with it by the time it's done. So, what do you expect will be accomplished between now and the next two weeks? I would suspect that all of that dirt will be gone, all of, all of the work behind the uh, old house will be done, and I'm not sure if we'll be hydro seeding by then. But I would say, um, pretty quick. I think April 17th was our deadline for the seating so th that'll be done by then you want to be gone all of, all of the work behind the uh, old house will be done and i'm not sure if we'll be hydro seating by then but i would say um pretty quick i think april 17th was our deadline for the seating so th that'll be done by then you want to you want to get the hydro seed down after april 1st but yeah exactly yeah. So we think we're right on track. Over here, Kyle. <laughs> Steve Rozier. You want to unmute yourself? Yes. Um, Roger and Judy Warner, Emily and Ed Crozier at 16 level. Um, Kathleen actually asked the question I was going to. I was going to ask about the grading, whether that matched the, the original plan. And it sounds like it does. It probably from our view, it looked a little steeper, maybe. But if if that's the plan, that's great. Um, certainly a big improvement over what we've been looking at. So um, it used know. to be a big culvert with all rocks in the middle that, with pipes. All of that got removed. It's, it's gone. And so yeah. what's going to help with the drainage down that hill now? So the drainage is going to be managed by a swale, which is running down to the south side of the slope, if you're looking at the plan. And that's going to be directed right down to the drainage basins, which is, if you look out into the backyard, there are two riprap areas that is going to allow water to infiltrate into the ground. And that'll be managing the majority of the stormwater. Any of the stormwater that's running over top of the mountain itself will be slowed and and essentially allowed to infiltrate into the ground by the plants and the grass that's going to be 
put in there with the hydro seed. So those are good erosion control measures, natural erosion control measures, and anything that's extra will be caught by the drainage bases at the bottom. Okay. Definitely a big improvement over what we were looking at. So we appreciate the work that's been done. We just want to make sure we're on track. We also are going to uh, move those Jersey barriers at some point. Um, they're way down the bottom. They still kind of really provide stability to the area. But once 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 the grass grows and everything's good, we'll be able to walk a small excavator right down the, along that path, and they will pull those out okay. and, and clean that area up. I, I thought those Jersey barriers had been taken out yesterday. Um, if they were, that's great. We just expect, and I know I talked to him, the contractor, about removing those as, as soon as possible, as that was something that was brought up by Jay Tallerman. So if those were taken out, then that's great. It just haven't been on the site in the last couple of days to check it out. And I don't yeah. recall when it was there today, if they're still there. I think they, I saw them lifting those yesterday with oh. chain and stuff. So I think those may have already been removed. So that's awesome. Well, that's great news. If not, they will be, but sounds like maybe they've already been done. Okay, cool. Sounds like the end is in sight. Absolutely. Thank you. Any further questions? Welcome. Just one other question, yep. Kathleen Alexander, 14 Level Street. Um, what board would oversee a parking area as far as um, a barrier for the cars or um, runoff from the cars? You know, if you've got I don't know how many parking spaces there are up there, but if it's not, if it's out of the buffer zone, what board would be concerned with a parking lot at the top of that hill? On a single family house, nobody. No, uh, yeah, I was just going to say we have we have the same rights as everyone else as far as our parking lot goes, sure. and and fr frankly, we have additional rights because we're zoned to farm. Yeah. So so what would happen is uh, if you had a concern or a complaint, I would expect that would be. Uh, the Board of Health, if you think it's going to impact uh, septic systems or planning board, if you think that it's going to be. Uh, yeah, just like anything, if you had a problem with your neighbors, yeah, you know, if, if they had a gas leak or something. Yeah, if 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 there were if there was evidence that the parking lot had a whole lot of coming from vehicles there into a wetlands, then we would pop our heads up and, and take a look at it. Thank you. Anything else? All right, I'll entertain a motion to continue. Uh, continue 106 Millville uh, until April 13th. So moved. Second. Seconded it. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Now we move to uh, uh, let the owner know we appreciate. I will standing yeah. right on this. And, yeah, no, well, we, not, yeah, we said right from the sure. beginning we were going to keep our word. Yep. Um, but I will let him know he'll appreciate that. Sorry, you said April 13th, mm -hmm. didn't at the last hearing you said it was April 6th. I made a oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, April 6th is the, the first Tuesday, the second Tuesday. Yes, yeah. okay. Thursday. Thursday. Oh. If we could just make sure we reflect that in the record that she made a mistake. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a great. No, night. I was thinking two weeks ahead, and then and then and then I realized oh, I waited. Several times I either was here on the wrong day or wasn't here on the right day. So, right. well, now the long suffering uh, open the public hearing for uh, thirty-five Taft Avenue DBP two one eight dash zero eight four one. I don't know if he's still there, um, but it should just be a quick one. It was just um, to close out the previous order of conditions and issue the new one from the last meeting. Wait, this open as soon as it returns of dealing with paperwork. So take it away. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm backing away from this one. Yeah, you have to explain to me. The... I th yeah, I think it was just closing out the previous order of conditions from 2013 and then issuing the 35. new order. Yes, 35 tap tab and issuing the new order of conditions based off of the uh, the meeting from two weeks ago. So we voted to approve it? Yeah, it was voted in the last meeting two weeks ago. I think we had just sent in the paperwork that Monday prior to the meeting, so it was 
probably a little short of, of notice, but I think I think so, we got so confirmation that you had it. But. it to the com com, either the mailing, you know, Susan will have it in her town email and would be able to. Yeah, let me check right now. Hold on. Did you did you fill out the actual order of conditions? Or just a request for an order of conditions? Talking to you. Is it that me? Oh, um, I believe it was the request, right? Because that comes first. Yeah, so, the so you, you know what the best we, we don't have an admin. The best thing for you to do is to fill out the actual order of conditions. And because obviously there's not nobody has any paperwork. Paperwork with this either disappears very easily around this board. <laughs> so uh, you might want to fill it out and get it in there so we can sign it. Okay. So, I, I, I remember this, this was you were thinking of. Uh, rebuilding the house, but you were going to tear it down in order to do that. That's correct. Yes. And is that still you're tearing the whole house down? Yes. Either way, it was approved at the last meeting, correct? Yes. Yes. So we just have the paperwork that nobody has. Yeah, since I don't have minutes, you can go look at the video. The video's up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we will continue this. Uh, I, I'll just. Well, we don't need to continue. We just need to write up and sign the paperwork. So it's. Okay. So I guess this would be closing the public hearing part. If, if, and what instead I would do is have on the agenda is not a public hearing to make sure that the signature happens if you don't get together with Susan in the meantime. Okay. Uh, and then the goal would be that. At the meeting, we get all the signatures and then you make a photocopy and that way it doesn't get lost in the back rooms back over the other side of the side of the building. Uh, okay, hey, Carl, if, yeah. if he if he filled everything out and got it to the conservation office. Or, in, in, you know, to somehow to one of somebody, couldn't we just sign it like we always do, like we've been doing for the last year? We can have people stop by the office and, and, and sign things, yes. No, he doesn't yeah. have to wait. He doesn't have to wait till April thirteenth. Yeah. If he, yeah, if he wants, to, if he, I don't know if it's is this a is this a time uh, I'm sensitive. sensitive. Yeah, I mean, I, I was hoping that. Case, you've got Susan. Yeah. Don't nag her about it. All right. Yeah, I think that was kind of what we talked about last time. Is that we would just. Yeah, and and and, and unless there's something printed out, then we can just to go stop by the office and, and put our signatures on it. So, Mr. Chairman, yeah, I, am I mistaken, or is the whole reason why the concerns because he has to pull up with one old order conditions out in order to open a new? Um, I don't think the Susan is not you looking for the old one. I'm just looking for the email with um. Order of conditions. It was on that Monday of the previous meeting. I, I forget what that date was, but the last last meeting that we had was what March sixth or seventh. So it was that Monday of sixth or seventh. Hi, so Bob, uh, making... Mike Cassidy here from Gary and Halnon. We prepared the paperwork requesting the certificate of compliance for the expired order from 2013. Um, I believe hard copies were dropped off um, at the town office. I don't know that an email was sent with electronic copies um, Do you of the request for CSR. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I gave it to um, one of our clerks in okay, town, he, along with a check for $25. Peter's going to take a look and see if he can find it. Yeah, I can check tomorrow. I, 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 thought, I thought at the last meeting that uh, I was going to check for it. But I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll have the, the only thing I have is the stuff that was presented at the last meeting my inbox okay i will um i'll confirm with our with our clerk okay well if peter finds it those were so yeah so okay yeah yeah i could stick around if you find it yep yep yeah, yeah, now but do you still done. you still did you send a new order of conditions or, or a request off. for an order of conditions when you dropped off or did you just drop off the old we we, we filed the notice of intent um and so that 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 functions as the request for an order of conditions. 
Right. But it, so what we're trying to get at is... We did not you, fill out the full paperwork. Okay, well, if you want to get this done in a speedy fashion, maybe fill it all out and email it so we can get printed, and then we will sign it when, you know, during the next week or so. Yeah, we can just leave it someplace and... Well, leave it in the like, leave it in the mailbox like we always do. Then once it's so, signed, we can get it to the applicant. So, so to, to clarify, they filled out a new notice of intent. Did you send a copy to the state? Yes. Yeah. So, there, there, the there is a file yeah. number and everything. Yep. State and yeah, the town. Do, you, do we have a file number? Yeah, I have an email from the okay. central regional office right here. All right. Then we can go ahead and mm -hmm. two and eight two eight four one. Yep, that's it. Okay. And as I said, I'm delegating this part of it. Are all parties concerned know what's going to happen in the next couple of days? Oh, she's looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> so so you you got you're gonna get it to us or do I have to fill it out? I'm so I'll fill it out. Um, the only the only thing is, would there be any um, special conditions um, that that were voted on by the board that you need to have it amended with that? Uh, typically, there's there's like the there's the, yeah. the, the hard paperwork so. side, the boilerplate. But a lot of the times there will be specific conditions. Like yep. that You're not putting in a well. That's our normal special condition. Yeah, no. Well, yeah. Far away from the work that you're doing in the demolition and the rebuilding, yeah. but we didn't have anything from the special requests. It was pretty straightforward. So the, the boilerplate yeah, was not sufficient. I mean, as long as we got silt fence along, you know, between the the uh, the, the work and the lake, you know, that's somewhere. Video, you yes. know, that's you know, on I, the yeah, I, it's I on wasn't the, at the last meeting, so I don't know if what was approved and if, if they I, I, I didn't see the plan. It, it is on the plan and it actually wraps up the side yards too. And then there's another silt fence that goes uh, in front of the stock area as well. So the, the lake is like double protected by silt fence from the stock area to the to the water front. Perfect. So, Thank you very much. Yeah. Yep. There's nothing in my jump box in here, so okay. Yeah. So can you summarize what you're expecting to happen? So we yeah. sure yeah. everyone's yeah. yeah, so he's gonna prepare the boilerplate. Um Mike Hassett. Mm -hmm. Like Mike Hassett's going to prepare something and then email it to us. Yes. Okay. Yep, and then we'll all sign it. Okay. And then I'll notify you as soon as it's signed and then okay. off we go. So after he emails it, you're gonna print it out and mm -hmm. put it someplace either in this building or in our annex and then let the rest of I feel of us better like putting it on my farmer's porch or the Dropbox. <laughs> Thanks, Lou. Okay. This building is cursed or something. Uh, well, I'll, I'll leave <laughs> Susan in charge of that. You can talk to me about where you get it all set, send a text out saying that you have it. Yeah, I will. And then we'll figure out how okay. to sign it. Okay. We'll take, we'll take yeah, we'll one step at a time. Yeah. And then the last person to sign it should make a copy and then get the wet name copy and then mm -hmm. to have you pick it up. Oh, yes. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, you could reach out to me anyway, phone or email, and I could come pick up. Okay. So that concludes. Yeah, if, you could, if you could send your phone number to the town email that, that we all get, that way there. Um, yeah, we can just text you when it's ready to. Yeah, I'll let yep. you know as soon as I'm in town quite a bit, I can, I can get it to you or let you know where it is so you can pick it up from Ellen. Uh, you is know, the town clerk or something. Is the sill fence in place now? Uh, it is in place. Yep. Well, I think you could probably start. Okay. Yeah. 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 The silt fence just went in this past week. So as long as the silt fence is up. Yep. Take a look at it first. Yeah, I'll take a ride by then, Ma. Yep. But I, I would say if the silt fence is up, you can start working. Okay. It sounds like we're going to have this within a couple of days so okay and we did we did get verbal approval last week yeah just working out the, the printed copy yep all right any further discussion great uh we can finish that up and move on to the next agenda item which would be a discussion about 23 cape road the stormwater runoff uh issue okay. thank you
Thank so, you. Uh, I would like to start. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. I'd like to start by reviewing the results that we had with the sidewalk, the observations that were made, and then we will have a discussion. So I need that. I didn't know I'm supposed to be here. Nobody told me, so yeah. I just came. Because you like us. Huh? That's because you like us. <laughs> Always ready. <laughs> Wrote up uh, the results of the sidewalk. Um. Last Friday, uh, three members of the Conservation Commission conducted a sidewalk on the property after the various storm events. Um, we examined uh, the area down here where the hydro seeding and other work that had been done in 2021. And we can say that the stormwater management is working as intended for this part of the lot. The high receding is uh, now capturing the flow. There's no silt going from this property into the wetlands area. We looked at the road coming down the hill here. There's no evidence of sheet water flowing down the road and then overwhelming the end here in the road terminus. We did observe this an issue with. Um, Property coming along this part of the property. Um, there is a large riprap slope here, and even two days after the stormwater event, we could hear a lot of water rushing underneath riprap going down to the pipelines area. We were able to walk up here, and in the channel, we saw a lot of evidence of silt and that there had been a whole lot of water rushing down very quickly in here. And so that is where uh, the current issue on the site is. This part of it uh, is, is causing the problem. We looked at, looked over the border at the stormwater retention that was coming off of the solar farm. There does not appear to be an issue. The riprap and the channeling is not present. The, the water seems to be coming off of this particular lot and it is being taken care of by their existing stormwater plant. There was some fooling here of sediment and silt on the other side of the stone wall in the parcel where the solar farm is, but we believe that that is a result of the water rushing down here overflowing into that area after it had, it had gotten down here, that there was no runoff coming up and going in this direction. Uh, and then Mike, can you say what your observations were for the soccer? I went up after after looking around up on the soccer field over here. The roadway coming in, soccer field. Yeah, that's a swale all the way up, all the way down. You stand over here and you look at the parking lot. The parking lot is everything is pitched to this corner. You look at the soccer field, even though it's level, you can see a slight pitch to this corner. So all of this water here, this is paved, all of this water here. It's that way to that point there, uh, which means that water that you have is rushing down here. That's all. That's all. That's a big area. Plus, right here, I believe that was used as a snow dump. I took some picture, picture, and sent it in. There was some big piles of snow, even though we didn't get much snow. There was some big piles of snow right here. There's drains in there. It's uh, drain manhole, but I couldn't see where the discharge. 
Don't they have a detention pond there, right at your finger there, in that, uh, in the, detention pond, right? in between that, uh, like at the end of the green, there's a stone yeah. down in the middle. Yeah, yeah. All in the middle there. That there? Yeah. I didn't walk over there. That is a detention walk pond there. That is, right? Yeah. And there is one at the end of the, uh, yeah, can I can I show you something? Please. Guys? I I had a video. This was the Sunday before uh, the big storm we had. This was last week. It's uh, the water. This is when we spoke up here, and the water look is coming from the other side. And this not during the big storm. This is when it was just a little rain. Yeah. And I observed before. That's why I made a swale and I put mass and I put every 50 feet uh, the stone. The check dams. Yeah. And at the end, you know what you I ran over. Before, but I never really knew how much uh, <laughs> rain was coming. During the last storm, we had, I think, uh, I don't know. Uh, three inches. In well, they have time. four feet of snow. And there was a lot of rain. <laughs> and I went and I I saw that the water, when you look right here, it was coming. Uh, it was coming. And oh, I have another video before where the water still, still like a very little movement. But after the storm, there was a lot of water coming. And there is, there is. At the end here, okay, I need a drink. there is a lot of stones, but the water was supposed to turn this way and go this way, but when there is a lot of water, some of it goes straight. Yes, we have okay. straight water going straight. So down. I called the D and the L design, and he came and looked uh, to see what he can do, and then he emailed you guys to ask what the problem is. And they suggested a couple of things, not only there at the road to do a few cleanup. And back there, he said he's going to figure out after he talked to you exactly what you want him to do. OK, he will help to fix that problem in that corner where the water's coming in, because I think the problem, if it's going to be fixed where the soccer field and the parking lot, it's going to be a while. So during that time, if anything you guys think suggest that I should do, I do it. So you've hired DNL. He's is he an engineer? I hired him and he came and looked, but he said he's gonna contact. He's gotta contact us, right? Because we. So have I call. I call him today. I said, did you? He sent you guys email, but he get no response to see what is he complain exactly. But when I walk with him and I show him what I see, he had an idea. But he wants you guys to tell him what to do. Yes, that's uh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Call. Because uh, two years ago, I did a lot of work. What you guys told me, and it seems the problem didn't really get resolved. One hundred. Oh, because we didn't tell you what to do. We told you to hydro seed, and you did a good thing with that. Yeah, so I did. We didn't tell you how to fix the problem, and that was our bad. Yeah, I did. You did. Not you personally, uh, Damon told me and Inspector Timmy, uh, he was the town inspector in yes. two occasion. Uh, what you did, Abe, was a temporary <laughs> thing because it was an emergency situation and you did it. OK, you did a good job at, at it. So this this is a total, di totally different thing. We have water running off from uh, another piece of property that abuts yours and you have water you know, groundwater that's coming, you know, it was a lot of water in that corner. It hadn't rained for two days and there was a bunch of water. Either way, you did a good job on what you did over there and you corrected a big problem because there was a lot of silt going in the wetlands before you hydroceded and fixed everything. So that, that being said, I talked to the engineer today because I know him and I do work with him and he said, he had called me because he didn't hear back from the from the conservation office. He knew there was a meeting tonight. He said that he is putting something together for the next meeting to and I, and I explained to him briefly 
what we were looking for and what we saw at the site walk Friday. So he is going to put something together. And, you know, as long as you're okay with that, Abe, to... I'm okay. Whatever fix, you tell to me. Fix the, to fix um, this problem so that if we do get a heavy rainstorm in the, in the next couple of months, before anything gets done or whatever, who knows what's going to happen with blue water, before that gets done, that we do not have this ongoing problem. There's nothing we can do about the soccer field right now. That's not... That's going to be... So we just need to correct... We need to slow down that water. That is right. We need we need someone who knows what they're talking about. So that's I means that's an engineer. Why, that's so why he has that's, an engineer that sounds good. So because yeah. we're not engineers. Showing where the, the the channel that is causing the problems. I believe we mentioned during the sidewalk that a potential solution was somewhere around the middle of the uh, between the raised area and the wetlands area well back from the buffer zone there would be a temporary detention basin that would be capturing a whole lot of stormwater coming down is that the sort of thing that we would be asking the site engineer to to plan for or what what other guidance would we give that's what yeah, he, i mean, i, I I did throw that to, I, I mentioned that to him, but like I said, I don't want to tell him his job. Right. It's not my, it's not my position, but I mean, I think that that's kind of where he was going with it anyway. Um, but again. What, what, what the biggest problem is, is a lot of water coming down that swale from the roadway up at 140 all the way up. When you stand over there, like I pointed out, and you look up that way, when you stand right there, anywhere there, and you look up at that area, that whole area is pitched to where you had your finger. Just like this. So obviously, the water, if that's a detention pond, isn't all that water is not making it no. to that detention pond. No, I know. So that's what we got to determine. If that detention pond was designed to pick it up, question that I've raised, I will now follow up with the planning board and the select board. This parcel is not anywhere near the wetlands. However, their stormwater plan is no longer sufficient to prevent their stormwater from adversely impacting um, the wetlands that we're concerned about. So which of the three boards is responsible for engaging with the owners of this parcel to say, your stormwater plan needs to be improved and you need to mitigate the runoff that is now working its way downhill. Any, any suggestions? Yeah. Uh, so I talked to Jeff Walsh today about the parking lot at the soccer field, you know, about stormwater management as in pervious and impervious. He said in that particular situation, he feels that there was not that big of a difference. I kind of, I, mean, I, I can't argue with them, but I, I feel that there's a lot more water coming off asphalt than there is off of gravel or recycled asphalt put down that's pervious versus impervious, correct? Well, well at this point, we don't care whether the excessive runoff is a result of a parking lot change or lots of whatnot. When they built the soccer field and the planning board approved it, they approved a stormwater management plan. We now have evidence from last Friday that the stormwater management plan for the soccer field is no longer adequate. So my question is, who goes and talks to the owner of that parcel and says, your stormwater plan needs to be improved. They need to engage their own site engineer and determine how to ensure that the stormwater flow off of their property is up to whatever now, is the regulations. Are. I believe his lawyer has got to approach whoever owns that property and mm -hmm. point out the fact uh, that honestly, they're dumping a lot of honestly, water. Honestly, I knew this problem exists uh, since they built it. 
but I try to always fix it because I don't want the kids playing in the soccer field and everything. Let me tell you what. That is another thing. This is when they build it. This area right here, uh, the parking, uh, it's a crush for this one here. Right. The corner here, the water went first when uh, they built it. The water before this here, the water was rushing right here. Coming in right here, I mean, like, 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 uh, like a lot of water. And I had this crushed, uh, crushed the little uh, stones here, this parking, and it was down, going down, like downhill. And it takes all the asphalt. So I had to get more asphalt and put it here because the water, and I had to put, if you go there now to this parking right here, I put uh, a lip and I directed it to the drain right here in this corner. So it would it drain into the detention pond that it's here. So there's a detention pond there? Yeah, there is a detention pond right here. Yeah, it's a big one. But is, the, is, it, is it directed there by, is it directed there, it, does the water go into a, a riprap swale to get to the detention pond or does it actually go into a piping system? Piping system. No, everything is underground. When we did this parking lot here, this parking, the piping, and this was asphalted, and there is old piping and permitted. And over here, there is another detention pond right here. And there is another detention pond right here. And only, I think, 10% go to the street or uh, to this here. 90% the water is here. But from here, there was water coming from here. And when I did this uh, solution, so the water comes from here, probably still come, and comes and go to the drainage right in this corner, right here. So it will not be a problem. But if you go further, the water start coming from a little bit from every, especially after a storm, and then it end up to be here. So if you suggest uh, that it will be a catch basin, open catch basin for the time being, and it will catch most of the Rushing water it will leave the silts in the ground, only pure water comes. And maybe the, you can put two catch basin. The first one will get most of it. The second one, 100% uh, will do it. I did this when I was building a gas station and the water was going right into the, uh, the, the groundwater, was going right into the wetland, 100% clean. Well, that would Talk be to you guys that, and the engineer. That would be the engineer designing. Yeah. What I'm saying is, in order to control the water and to figure out how you're going to control it, you first have to find out where it's coming from and start at that point. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. So your engineer would have to do some investigating and go, okay, I see. I, I see where the water's coming from. You know where the or, water coming. Or the water's bubbling up out of the ground, or the water's coming in from the street. They, you've got to determine, identify where the water is coming from. Right, and Mike. And in this instance, together it might be a to couple different hand. places, right? Exactly. Some comes from the grass, the soccer courts. Some comes from his. As it goes yeah. down, some comes from the solar panel. Right. And once it gets mixed. Yeah, can't do any. It's hard to say who's responsible for how much water. So right now, for us right. to tell him how to fix it no, I, is, isn't the answer. Me. That's right. I know. Some engineering's got to be done. Some investigation's got to be done. And a thought-out plan be, to be presented. Mm -hmm. I, can, I, I you, know you exactly. Know, and I apologize no, no. for it, it comes down on you because no. the way I see it is I can I can well, do it easily. Yeah, it's just I don't yeah. know if I have the stomach to do it. I'm more interested in solving the problem for now. And if there is a long-term solution, maybe I'll link it to the blue water that uh, that will take care of it. Okay, and everybody is happy because you know law lawyers and uh, in the end uh, probably you don't get the best result nobody wins if, that's it yeah if i have to i will but i don't think i do because i know of this problem maybe four years ago and i try to fix it uh, the best i can right now uh, the engineer will take care of it they will consult with the town 
and they will do whatever they uh, have to do. It will be a, a, a fast uh, fix, quick, well, move quick, uh, hire somebody uh, uh, with the approval of the town what we should do. And if you have another uh, way of approaching it, I'm very open. Hey, Mike. Yeah. When, when you walked over there and looked at the parking lot at the soccer field, is so I, I missed what you said. Did you say that there is drainage? Like, a, is it just a riprap swale that takes the water down behind the, or is it actually pipe? No, there's, it looks like there's, there's quite a defined swale coming down from all the way up at 140, all the way down that red line, all the way down. Now, behind the when soccer they, field, I see there's a dirt area. Is that what you're saying is a detention basin? I didn't walk that far down and around. But see that, see that, have you see the picture yeah. there, that big dirt area directly behind the soccer fields? Yeah. I what believe is that? this is. Yes, yes. Detention yeah, there there is is detention. All right, so if that water is coming in a swale and, and coming down and like just making its way, meandering its way down there in a swale. Yeah, I don't think it's getting into there. This seems to just no, go. No, so it, it's, exactly. it's going into, it's going into Abe's property right there where right. That, that dark red line starts because that's where it's bleeding out of the banking right you know, so we, we saw that but there is drainage there's a, a a dome catch basin cover up at the beginning in this swale up at the beginning where they were using it as a snow dump so the dome catch basin cover is there to pick up the water that comes down that swale. Personally, I don't think it's making it into it and it's continuing down the swale because it's a, it's an obvious swale all the way down to where you guys saw the saw the uh, water moving under the stone riprap. And that stone riprap is six inch minus, so it's pretty big stuff. Okay, thank you. So, like I said, I think you got we got to you got to determine where the water's coming from, how much water's coming down there, and deal with it from the very beginning, not at the end. Unfortunately, he's the low he's the low guy. Everything's coming to him. So, <laughs> if, yep, <laughs> that's all you know, yours, Abe. That's that's why I said I bring it on. Right, <laughs> we'll take care of it. It's uh, you know it's uh, actually when it's not raining for like a week, you don't you don't really see anything, and then when it rains a lot, then you see it running. You know. Questions: uh, Will we be able to expect that you will have the engineer come with us? with the plan for us on April 13th. Oh, yeah. OK, I think uh, honestly, uh, not 100 percent, but uh, it seems he get very good idea what to do. I walk with him from the top to the bottom. I show him a few things I pointed out now. My, my next question is what can be done between now and April 13th on an emergency basis in case there's another Storm with like five or six inches. Okay. People have ideas about. Is there? I, is the silt fence intact, or it was kind of got uh, it was too overpowered at the bottom there, right? It cut, the water comes down so fast, Peter, and the silt fence doesn't even have a stand a chance in that in that certain that like 10, 15, 20 foot area. The silt fence all along here, where the hydro seeding was done, is in great shape. You get down to here, and it is completely flattened and covered in silt. Right. So for maybe 40, 50 feet at temporary, you put in hay bales, staked hay bales, and silt fence. That'll that'll slow the silt down. Uh, I, I'm, it's all temporary, right? And it's until we get a plan as is to. It's expensive option. I, no. I I don't think uh, silt fences being down is a good thing, right? It's. You clean it out and put it back up. What's Silt fences get overpowered all the all the time. It's, What's the impact of having a lot of hay show up in the wetlands? Hay bales will not uh, fall apart. They're, they're, no, they're designed. No, they do. They do <laughs> I fix this silt fence many times. Okay. 
like you said, yeah, if there is a lot of water coming, the only way is to slow yeah, down the water. Yeah. And the water certainly. I think between now and the 13, if the engineer call tomorrow and he say, I have this plan, I'm going to have him call you guys. And if you approve, we'll do it and see what the result. Maybe if it rain, there is a few days rain. We'll watch, see how good the result is. Setting on the bottom. Yeah. And then every couple of every 10, 20 feet or so. Rush stones. Rip wrap. It clearly wasn't sufficient. Is it make sense to have more stuff put in the channel temporarily to try and slow down the velocity, or is that not going to work given the volume? I was thinking maybe you put uh, half an inch, three quarter of an inch stone in the middle of it in a few places. Because that will catch these thin. I personally would wait to see what a professional engineer okay. looks at it. We oh, good answer. If he wants to yeah. if he wants to throw money at it, we can't stop him from throwing money at it. Okay. My personal opinion is get an engineer there, investigate where the water, how much water, and put a plan together that's gonna fix it the one time. Because obviously all the band-aids that have been thrown at that are not sticking. Yep. Yeah, I agree with great. the um the pay bales for emergencies. Yeah, well, that's a that's a, a, a great point. Because they're taller. I think so if you, if you put stone in that channel, what it's gonna do is it's gonna hit the stone and then make a pond and then just overflow both sides of the I'll I'll think I'll take the engineer, the professional uh, advice. Like ask you on on how to do something. What can we do now? to conditionally approve what the engineer would recommend without having to have another meeting in a week or two weeks. I wouldn't advise that because we don't know what he's going to recommend. Yeah. That's like okay, so it's going to be out, what he's going to do is going to be out of the buffer zone. So I mean, do we really do we really have any say about that if it's out of the buffer zone? Yeah, we 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 have zone? say because there's erosion in the wetland. And we're working on a plan to restore that. So the first stump is to prevent more from coming in. We can get into talking about what's there. But I think, A, we have the ability to, A, there's silt fence now that should be maintained and should be kept up. And you don't need a special meeting to say that, to bring at, his engineer to bring in hay bales to fortify that in my sense, would be a good idea. It's not going to clog up anything, but let's wait until we hear the plan okay. for any uh, so, so longer term so, fix. I would say the, by definition, the silt fence is outside the buffer area. So definitely we would ask that you go and replace that. Now, wait, the silt fence is in the buffer. Yeah. Okay. So are we it okay is. with authorizing him to? To say to go get that replaced. Oh yeah, or, yeah. The buffer needs to be maintained. That, that needs to so be maintained. The, the question for the engineer is, what can the engineer recommend you do outside the buffer area to prevent the, uh, the silt trench from just getting completely blown away in the next major yeah. rain event? Is that and, yeah. and then that that would hopefully take care of something between now and April thirteenth. And on April thirteenth, we would hear the engineer say. It, 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 First, if he did anything in the in the three weeks between now and then, and second, what his proposal is for a long term remediation, and hopefully the site engineer will have had enough time to look at the upstream sources, and we can have a conversation about what to do about upstream water and whether it's being done by a lawyer, whether one of the town boards goes talks to the upstream owners about their stormwater plans, and 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 have that conversation. Right, that's a decision that he's got to make. Like I said, he's the low man yes. in the chain. Everybody else's water is dumping in his lap and he's taking the brunt of it. And he's taking the brunt of, of, the of everybody else's water. Right. Yes. So, in my opinion, if I was him, I would get an engineer in there and I would also talk to a lawyer because I do not believe anybody has the right to just dump water onto your property and leave you holding the bag. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, sir. 
any other questions or comments from the committee before I open it up to the public? Okay. Go back to this. Uh, is there anyone in the audience who wishes to comment or ask questions about this matter? Yep, come on up to the mic. Uh, yes, that's on. That's on the side. Are you, are you keeping it on? Uh, yeah, it's in the kitchen. Yeah, I'll put the picture back. That would be. Uh, yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> That's about the limit of the picture. Uh, but I can, you know, that's this is the Mass GIS website. So, I understand how I live at 13 hectares of oils. I want to butter to the solar panel. And when the next rains, we'll move over there. I'm trying to find a station for you. Arm of the rains. Next to the um, so soft part. Backyard. This is my yard. Sorry. That's the middle of my backyard. It's closed. And this is a big farm that generates in my backyard. Generally, like this storms. The soccer field is up here. The border is coming down. It's coming off into this part of the Coming down from that I grass not close, so the water should have seeped in. Okay, now I have it. Now I have it back up. If you want to point to where your property is, in the area you're talking about. Okay. Um, well, okay, that's the next one. That's okay. This here is like the buffer zone. It's still in when this heavy rains and things like that, and it's coming down into my backyard. Okay. And my concern is, is that my leaching field and everything's over here. I don't need all that extra water flowing into my leaching field. Right. Didn't we have another neighbor with a picture and he had like a, a, a ho yes, he, it, where it says it's the same, it's the same stone wall, right? He lives there. Okay. Yeah, he had trees down because it was so wet. I yeah. Thank you. If I'm thinking of the same one. Very cold. See, when I went out and looked at it, I didn't look on the other side of the stone wall. I'm sure that river that was running behind his house was also running down behind it. This is so long, it's just like it's normal. So there, there is a great deal of water that comes down through that. Also, if you walk around the neighborhood, the drains in the street, catch basins, whatever, no matter what time of the year, they have been over the just so that we have water rushing through there. So really? there's underground water in huh. that area. The high water table. Perched, perched aquifer probably. Kyle, you have somebody with a hand up. Um, she, she's going to be following up with another video, and then I'll put oh, okay. it to the video. Picture, but it's from way back when the solar farm was being put in. And I just heard this. Talking about um, the retention. There's a retention. Yes. Yes. There's no retention. So unless it's over here, on the side of this line. Okay. Um, this so, was something. So you're saying there's a retention pond down here, but there's not one that was on the plan at the base of the soccer field up here. That's not quite what we're seeing on the on the years. Other than we haven't done a sidewalk. Yes, there's there's quite likely this this is probably a detention pond, and that is that is. Preventing runoff Thank. coming down the channel that we observe. Uh, and but you're saying uh, this doesn't. I, yeah, that, that picture doesn't seem to have that right. in there. 
Right. At that point, and that's just a drawing, right? And that's no, that's still something that was part. That I took a picture of the um, meeting here. Right, but it's a <laughs> picture of a right of, of a so what you know, sorry, drawing. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is that though we didn't observe water running down here, there's an issue with the water down here coming down for yeah. that part. Just from, because I know that I'm down lower than this, that yes. it's coming down this way. Okay. And, and again, this is this gets back to the jurisdictional question that water run off from this from the solar farm is going into your property and you're and it's not coming into the protected resource area, that's not under our jurisdiction. And it, and especially if it doesn't appear as if but the water's rushing down here, but then it isn't impacting the the wetlands as it continues down here. At least we haven't got a reported people having a whole lot of silt in this area down south. We're only hearing reports of issues on the 514 Cal. So right, Oh, that may be a planning board issue. Um, I, you know, if, if, if they I'm didn't do the site to... plan. Yes, I'd be very happy with the planning board starting uh, working with the homeowners office. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. if she wants to come to get come to the next planning board meeting, it might be better for us to talk. Then maybe we can contact the solar field. Okay. People, because right. we do have a number for a solar the, the for um, people that service the solar field, because I think we I I contacted them about the tree issue. On the other gentleman that lives on Edward Road. Again, I'm not sure so much sure if it's coming from the solar fields or if it's like coming down from the soccer field down between the solar field and. Okay, so so it sounds like what okay. Damon is suggesting is that both you and Jerry go to the next planning board meeting. Damon, when is that? Uh, April uh, April third. And can you make sure that something gets on the agenda if they are interested in knowing? Okay, well, could Jerry go? I don't know. Okay, well, listen. If she wants, at, at the next meeting that she is available to go to, she can call the building department and ask for Gail, and she will get her on the agenda, you know, at whatever fits into her schedule. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, we have a hand Thank up you. from Karen Friedman, so go ahead. Thank you. Um, I, I had a little trouble following um, your the site walks that you did just because uh, I couldn't see where you were pointing to. Exactly, but yeah. am I am I correct that water is flowing from the soccer field parking lot onto the gold gold medal property? Gold. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. And. So the sedimentation that wound up on on um, my client's property at 14 Talbot, are you saying that you're you're not sure exactly how that where that's coming from, or is it coming from 23 Cape Road, but that there may be other water that's coming along with it? The second, we determined that the sedimentation in the wetlands is coming from 23 Cape Road. It is in there because of the high volume of water flowing downhill. Is it also um, a result of the the degree of um, clearing of vegetation on the on 23 Cape? No, this is let me let me go back. Well, yes, if it was grassed, it wouldn't uh, give up the dirt. It would flow over and be clean runoff, but uh, it's running over raw dirt, picking up the silt. It's in a riprap slope, uh, swale all the way down. This when it right. gets when it gets into the wetland, into the wooded area at the end of the riprap, is when it's picking up majority of this. Exactly. Slope. Okay. Yeah. Are you? It's not. Are you... It's not flow sheet flowing over any dirt area. It's in the swale that runs along the lot line of the um, right, uh, the lot line of the soccer field, solar field, and. 23 Cape Road. Are, are, you think, now, uh, are you now able to see a photo with a bright red line at the southern end of the property and green hash lines? Yes. Okay. Yes. The green hash lines represent the hydro seeded area and the remediation that was done in 2021. 
that area is completely free of siltation. Uh, this is an old photo, so this is not accurate, but when we did the sidewalk, we saw no evidence of silt coming from anywhere except along the red line channel, where the red line channel hits uh, come, hits the, the ground cover there. That's where all the silt was getting picked up. We could see erosion channels in the ground, and we could see the silt then being carried through, and uh, we walked all the way along until we get the property line of 14 Talbot, and we saw silt all along that way. It was all coming from 23 Cape Road. Now, it was being carried there by a heavy volume of water coming from upstream. But we did not appear, we did not see lots of silt in the upper channel in the, in the easternmost part of the red line. The riprap up there was relatively clear and it was just signs of a very high flow of water. May I ask one more question? Please. Um, so as part of the, you know, we were talking about an engineering plan, um, but is there going to be some restoration of the wetlands, you know, to the extent that there's been, you know, um, clearing of vegetation in it? Is that part of the, is that part of the solution? It should be. Once we once we solve the immediate problem and ensure that no further siltation happens during stormwater events at that point, we can start talking about, again, hiring a crew to go in and, and remove the silt that is currently in the wetlands and talk about whether there needs to be uh, a restoration that involves going in and uh, planting vegetation again. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any further questions? All right. Uh, I will complete this part of the the, the meeting of uh, the discussion at Twenty Three Cape Road. And we will expect to hear from your site engineer and maybe you at the next meeting, April 13th. Uh, the next item on the agenda, a status thank you, update. Abe. Thank you. Yep. OK, thank you, guys. Good night. A status update on two Nipmuc Road. Is anyone here for two Nipmucs? OK. Uh, uh, Kyle? Yes, you have an update? I do. I went, I went and did this and, and inspected the sill fence. It's all up on the hill now where it was originally on the plan. Um, again, they were, uh, I think the engineer for them is the same one that's for Abe. He was trying to get some information. And I think we, you and I addressed that earlier today and you emailed him back and told him that, you know, we were all set. But he was, they were just, they were concerned because they were waiting to hear back. They wanted to get going. Right. And. So, so, fence, so the additional silt fence that I think was not uh, not in there on the hill is all done now. Okay. Uh, Peter, Mike, do you want to take us a, a visit to the site tomorrow or give them the go ahead to? No, it looked good. They they now they got the silt fence where it okay. belongs. All right. So uh, you can tell them verbally, and the next time I log in, it's a business. I'll take a few nights to go see it, but I, we are that close. Um, Sounds good. I think I think you did email them back, but I will let them know. Um, oh, I I didn't give them authorization. I just said we discuss it tonight. Oh, okay. Oh, you okay. and I come I'm out. Sorry. You can, I'm sorry. You um, can tell me the next time I log in, I'll send an email saying that as a result of our discussion, we are happy that the silk fence is where it's supposed to be. Should, they should be replanting some of the trees, Bob and Ollie. Perfect. Sounds good. Okay. Yes, Carl. Uh, I wasn't here at the meeting. The, my only concern was those trees should not have been cut. They they were within the hundred foot buffer, and they provided shade to that. So it's not as if. Uh, and, and what we were hearing at the time was they were from from, from Tim, especially Tim expected them they were dead trees, and they would be a hazard and, and at risk of coming falling over. I beg to differ that they were dead trees. They they were there were some. At, there were some good, healthy trees there, and they were tall, and they provided shade, which was the issue. So, I, I, he's going to be redoing that whole slope. Uh, what 
goes for landscape. I don't know how you're going to, or yeah, it's, it is what it is, but. Uh, I, I don't, it wasn't, I, I don't think it was the applicant just making the, the tree cutter that was in there, the an arborist or wherever it was, is the one that told them, you know, he pointed out to what was wrong with them and they were, they were, they, they were grown on ledge. So the root system was wide, but very shallow. So I think that was what, what the unhealthiness of the trees were because they were on the ledge. Um, and then after doing blasting and everything in there or whatever they were going to have to do for construction, the concern was that the, it was going to disrupt the root system and then they were going to be even weaker than they seem to be now. A, a tree being healthy as it had leaves on it and it wasn't all holes in it, it didn't look dead, but that's where he was... Uh, that's what he explained to Tim and I when we were there. Okay. All right. Uh, any further discussion? Okay. The the last business uh, we received correspondence from Chris Nudd at Eleven Applewood Lane. Uh, he is not having uh, flooding in his area. Uh, I'm sorry, he, he is, he has a wet backyard and is interested in dealing with it. Uh, he is on the plan. It appears that he's relatively far away from any wetlands that were in adjacent properties on the Applewood Lane subdivision. Two other, two, three other parcels in there did come before us uh, because they had wetland areas. I said that he, he did not impact it, but if he was concerned, he could come in and speak with us. But if he's not here or online, then, uh, was he the one who was asking for a sump or a, how to install French drain? Yes, that was, that was the, the French drain email. Yeah, if you can do it to daylight and keep out of the wetland. And yeah, um, the other correspondence that we received, um, there was a lawyer, sorry, not a lawyer, a realtor for a property. I, I don't have the email, but it's in, you should have copies of it. Uh, it was asking for information about whether we had done any uh, paper, had any paperwork for a particular lot. Uh, I re reported nope, not for that site. The adjacent parcel, someone there's wetlands in the southern area on both of them, and I said uh, if, back in 2009 or in 2010, uh, the CONCOM had looked at the neighbor who wanted to build a, a barn. And found a negative determination and outlined the process in email about how to come before us if he had they had any further questions. Uh, that's the only that's the only uh, outstanding correspondence. So, uh, unless people have any activity since last meeting or items that haven't been anticipated, we're ready for that most blessed of motions. <laughs> <laughs> I will now entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. No discussion. Third. All in favor. Four. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Um, and see you all in a couple of weeks. Good job, Carl.